Let me take this opportunity to welcome you all, those here present and those joining us online to this crucial side event, which brings together passionate voices from civil society and multilateral organizations in a discourse on the role of civil society mechanisms in realizing joint commitments. And we have a distinguished lineup of speakers and panelists to unravel the issues, namely Maria Coretti Loglo, representing the African Civil Society Forum on Drugs, Peter Sarossi, representing EU Civil Society Forum on Drugs, and a representative of the American Coalition on Drug Policies. We have uh, Mil Mirella Duma Frahi from the NODC Civil Society Unit to deliver an opening statement, and Marie Old Tanu from the European Union to close the event. But before they do that, I, before I call upon Mirella to deliver her opening remarks, I would like to highlight the African Union's commitment to engagement with civil society in the development and the execution of regional and national drug strategies and frameworks. The African Union facilitated creation of the African Civil Society Forum on Drugs, which was launched in November 2024, and we look forward to constructive collaboration. I am filled with a sense of hope and determination that our collective efforts will illuminate avenues towards a multi-sectoral, evidence-based, balanced, and integrated approach to drug control. And as the African Union, we implore our member states to open and strengthen collaborative ways to leverage the expertise and reach of civil society, particularly now when we are confronted with the rising threat of synthetic drugs, often with stronger intensity, easier to produce, to transport, and to market. And our expectations as the African Union for the Civil Society are that you walk not in front, not behind, but side by side with us in the development of policy instruments and other frameworks, implementation of regional and national frameworks, monitoring implementation by our member states, provision of technical assistance and capacity building, as well as the development of treatment facilities, to mention but just a few. Our greatest continent on the continent is contained in two sayings from our patriarchs. And I'll close my remarks by that. One of them, people say, if you find water rising up to your ankle, that's the time to do something about it, not when it is around your neck. That is attributed to the late Nigerian novelist Chinua Achebe. The second one comes from the late South African Anglican Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who said, there comes a time when we need to stop just pulling people out of the river we need to go upstream to find out why they are falling in. And all, both of these sayings speak a lot about prevention, especially given our demographics in Africa. And once again, I want to welcome you all to this important event. And uh, let me welcome Mirela Duma Frahi from UNRDC Civil Society to give us um, opening remarks. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you, uh, Marella, uh, for opening up for us. As was mentioned, um, unfortunately, my colleague Augusto couldn't make it through the line quick enough this morning. There's a lot of uh, side events starting at 8 o'clock today. There's a very big, long line, so I imagine we'll continue to have people joining us uh, as people get through that line. I do, uh, my name's Penny Hill. I'm with the Vienna NGO Committee on Drugs, um, and I chair the Asia-Pacific uh, Working Group as part of the VNGOC. Very happy to be here today and also very much appreciate the African Union for leading this side event today and working along us, uh, alongside us and the African Civil Society Forum on Drugs uh, I'd also like to uh, mention that we're very proud to support the work of the African uh, Civil Society Forum on Drugs and work closely with our EU colleagues as well. Um, so I will hand over, to, I think, to Maria first to open up as one of our first civil society uh, speakers on behalf uh, of the Africa Civil Society Forum on Drugs. Maria, you have the floor. All right, thank you very much and good morning, everyone. 
um, it's a great opportunity to be in this panel to bring to this space what the Africa Civil Society has been doing, um, the spirit behind the formation, and what we look forward to in terms of your all, I mean, all of you, your support in moving the contribution of civil society forward. So over the years, we all know the contribution civil society has always brought to this space, especially in this discourse and response regarding the drug situation globally. And so in 2019, with the support of the Vienna NGO Committee and the um, Civil Society Unit of UNODC, um, we developed a regional common position. And basically, this common position was to retreat our concerns about drugs and drug policy in the region. It was also a mechanism to help us coordinate the process of this um, document mobilization. And so in 2019, when we met in Cairo, um, we were able to mobilize a number of the civil society organizations within the region to come together to at least express our concerns and our, 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 our views around the situation of drugs within the region. So to this end, um, the new Africa Civil Society platform was proposed to support and create an engaging and a comprehensive um, collaboration with our regional bodies, especially with the African Union and all the other regional sub-bodies that we have within the region, and also how we can also even contribute globally at this space, engaging with our member states on this platform to bring our concerns and our contributions to this. So basically, our objective in forming this was to bring together strong civil society voice to our member states and to the AU and contribute to most of the um, strategies that have been developed over time and, and around drugs. And also, um, also to strengthen the civil society. It is believed that the more, I mean, one, I mean, there's a saying in my language that when you have a broom that is put together, it sweeps better than when you remove a single broom to sweep. And so bringing all the civil society together with a stronger voice, we believe that we can contribute and also provide the necessary support to our member states to do what they are doing already on the ground. And also to encourage data gathering, because one of the issues we have always um, 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 had problems with, especially in proposing the way forward and suggestions has been that we lack data, there's no data. And so that is one of the mechanisms we as civil society felt is important as people who are on the, on the ground working with the grassroots and engaging with the people who are most affected by these policies are able to gather data from that level to bring to the space of our member states to help in crafting the evidence, I mean, crafting evidence-based policies that can actually address the challenges on the ground. And so what have we been doing so far around this since the birth of um, this civil society platform, which gave birth to it, I mean, the initiatives in Cairo and its launch in Zambia last year? I, I am happy to say that as a new baby, we haven't really done so much, but of course, within this period, we've been able to contribute significantly to the discussion, especially with the meet-in review. In, um, Zambia, we're able to mobilize civil society there. I mean, we had a hybrid session where we managed to discuss the various challenges that have been identified regarding the meet and review to contribute to the discussion and also bring our rich experiences and leave the experiences of communities to, to contribute to the meet and review. Also, in November, the Africa group in Vienna here, with the support of the chair, um, the, the current chair of the CND, Ghana, managed to organize um, a dialogue. And that dialogue extended its invitation to the civil society organizations within the region to contribute, to bring our expertise to the space, and also share experiences with our member states, especially areas that are of concern to our, our main civil society as well as the citizens of Africa. And so um, in this meeting, we were able to develop some um, areas or specific areas of concern that 
it's, I mean, that Africa civil society feel that our member states should be looking at and also engaging at, at this global space. We are all aware of the situation. Of course, it's always difficult to be able to engage member states, but we feel that being organized, being brought together as a stronger force, we'll be able to meet with our member states to bring to that space, especially our contribution in the development of the continent as a whole. Um, I would want to pause here so that maybe if there are questions and clarity, I mean clarifications, I can address them as we go along. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. We can also come uh, back to Q&A at the end, perhaps after all the speakers have gone through. Thank you so much for sharing with us the experiences that you've gone through in setting up the African Civil Society Forum on Drugs and what you've learned so far. Will you finish with your intervention and we'll move over to um, Peter. Uh, our next speaker is Peter Sorosi, um, who will be presenting on good practice standards for civil society uh, organisation involvement on behalf of the EU Civil Society Forum on Drugs. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much, Penny. I'm very glad to speak on behalf of the EU Civil Society Forum here today uh, about how we uh, are trying to make sure that the involvement of civil society is meaningful in the European Union. So the CSFD, the Civil Society Forum on Drugs, uh, is an expert group of the European Commission uh, to advise policymakers about drug policy issues. Uh, it was created in 2007 by a green paper of the European uh, Commission, which is now represented here by Mori Ode, with whom we have a very good uh, cooperation as civil society. And the forum has currently 45 members uh, from various countries of the European Union for a three-year mandate. Uh, the forum meets every year in Brussels. Uh, we have a plenary meeting, uh, and the forum itself is, represents a great diversity geographically, uh, also different kind of ideological approaches, different sectors from treatment, rehabilitation, prevention, harm reduction, uh, and also gender-wise. So the forum is uh, led by a core group, which is elected by the members, and we have four uh, ver thematic working groups working on different uh, issues. I am one of the chairs of one of these working groups, which is about uh, civil society involvement in the member states. And today I would like to speak about one uh, uh, study we did about how meaningful the involvement of civil society is in the EU. In 2021, we published a report uh, about uh, uh, how can we make sure that the involvement of civil society is meaningful in drug policies. And we created a document which is called the uh, Quality Standards of Civil Society Involvement in Drug Policies, which can be found in, in the website of the CSFD. And this is a tool for both decision makers and civil society about what makes uh, the involvement of civil society uh, meaningful. We identified uh, six steps of how civil society shall be involved in drug policy decision making. Uh, this uh, first, first, the mapping and selection of civil society, second, formulation of the mandate of civil society, agenda setting, drafting, preparing decisions, implementing decisions, and monitoring and evaluation. And all of these three stages, civil society should be involved. And uh, at all of this, all of these uh, six stages, uh, we identified nine overarching quality criteria that should be applied and uh, and ensured. And these nine overarching criteria, quality criteria are transparency, balance, timeliness, approachability, competence, openness, trustfulness, autonomy, sustainability, and relevance. So all these nine criteria should be fulfilled if, if we can call the, access, uh, the, the experiment meaningful. You can, of, of course, ask me that this looks very nice on paper, but whether this, this is really happening and implemented in the European Union. So we had the same question, so we did a study, a qualitative study in four uh, European member states, uh, EU member states, uh, about Ireland, Finland, Greece, and Hungary to test this tool and to assess the meaningfulness of civil society involvement with focus groups. And this, uh, uh, this, uh, at this study, we assessed how decision makers and civil society actors in these countries 
uh, uh, perceive the situation according to these nine overarching quality criteria. So how meaningful they find this uh, exercise with civil society. And the main uh, conclusions, first we mapped the structures, different mechanisms and structures in these countries, and we found that all, all countries had some kind of formal mechanisms to, to, to talk to civil society, although Ireland is the most advanced country among these four, because in Ireland civil society can even participate in the decision-making drug coordination body, so they, the civil society representatives can even vote, vote there. Uh, in other countries, they only have a monitoring and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 observer role. Uh, uh, we also assess the transparency of this pro, uh, of the of the civil society involvement, and civil society often sees that they don't really have an oversight of how the decisions are really made. So uh, they don't really see how uh, what what decisions are are based on. Next, we also assess the, how approachable uh, government uh, officials are for civil society, and we found that there are differences among civil society organizations. Some have very good uh, informal connections, channels to talk to the government. Others uh, feel that they are excluded from the processes. We identified in this study a significant gap about how the decision, making, decision makers see the role of civil society and how civil society itself sees its own role. Uh, because, um, uh, because many, uh, many government officials perceive that civil society is overstepping its, its role and it's entering a kind of political realm. Uh, and also, next one, uh, the, the, the trust uh, is sometimes broken when c uh, civil society criticizes the government in the public and the government perceives this as a threat. So there, are, there is a conflict there as well. We also identified um, uh, the phenomenon which is called the shrinking space. So in many countries, there is less and less uh, space for civil society, less and less funding, and civil society organizations are often uh, scapegoated. Next one. Uh, about the competence of civil society, uh, all, all decision makers, it was very reassuring that they see civil society members as very competent in their own professional fields. But as well, it was also civil society was also criticized that they don't understand the decision making processes enough. Uh, and then the sustainability was a key issue, so that civil society has no funding on advocacy, which is sometimes a key barrier. And the uh, last one is the relevance uh, that most civil society members felt that it is not only you know, the formal existence of the formal mechanism that matters, but if they, their voice is really heard and taken into consideration at, at, at the decisions. And um, if you are interested, uh, to, if you would like to learn more about the Civil Society Forum on Drugs, we created, a, we produced a movie about it, a short video, so you can uh, watch it. It's called Right, right to Sit at the Table. And you can also check the website of the Civil Society Forum, which is civilsocietyforumondrugs.eu, and then you can find all the relevant documents and uh, materials about the forum. And if you have any questions, I'm really happy to uh, answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter, for um, giving us a great overview of how mechanism, the mechanisms have been set up um, in the EU and how, the, how well they're working for civil society. I think your mic's still on. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would also very much recommend uh, checking out the video that Peter um, has mentioned, the um, organisations in the, in, uh, that Peter it represents uh, are very good at making videos and have very good quality videos, so I'm sure it's a very good one to watch. Um, I now will hand over for our final intervention, um, formal inf intervention for the panel before we hand over for Q&A um, and hopefully a fruitful discussion uh, within the room. Uh, uh, for closing remarks from um, Marie or Tanu from the European Union Commission. Thank you, Marie. Yes, thank you very much uh, indeed. Uh, good morning from my side to, to everyone. It's really a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I am the team leader in the drugs team of the European Commission, and we are indeed in charge of, of uh, helping run the civil society forum on drugs. 
And um, as you've heard from uh, Peter's intervention, the EU has a long history of su supporting civil society. This started in 2006 with that green paper, and in 2007, already the, the first civil society forum on drugs was uh, formalized. This uh, forum is uh, an expert group which acts uh, together with the Commission and which we consult on different uh, topics which are of relevance in the EU. So yeah. your uh, cooperation with civil society and in particular with the Civil Society Forum is also a very important element of all our EU drug strategy. Um, it's really something that is key for us to have civil society participate in the development, the implementation and also the evaluation of drug policies. And just to highlight an example, we're currently starting the evaluation of our 2021 to 2025 evaluation. And, and of course, civil society will be involved in, in that exercise. For us, the added value is twofold. Uh, of this mechanism. Uh, we see an added value in bringing civil society organizations together and offering this forum also for them independently from the institutions so that uh, we can facilitate in this way a mutual and common understanding, exchanges of best practices, experiences. And so the civil society organizations can work to amplify their voices uh, as was highlighted by a previous speaker. For us as institution, uh, we benefit a lot from civil society interventions. The, sorry. Um, they, they bring us a lot of expertise and on the ground experience. Um, also, we often talk about best practices, but these start as innovative approaches, which are often undertaken by civil society. So it's important for us to collect that information early on so we can build on it in order to, to draw uh, lessons. Um, so they inform us on ongoing recent developments and on this point I just want to highlight that we're actually going one step further and formalizing the fact that the civil society uh, can feed also in the work of our agency. The European Union has an agency which is looking into the drug situation and we are specifically uh, promoting cooperation with civil society for our agency as of July with a new mandate there will be a specific mechanism in pl place for that. And, um, and I think to, to conclude, I just want to, to encourage indeed all uh, regional groups and all levels to consider having such mechanisms because uh, it, they bring a lot of added value for our policy making. I'm pleased to see that this is happening in other regions and following the setup of those mechanisms. It is our responsibility not only to listen to the voices of the groups we created, but also to promote them and facilitate exchanges with other institutions and groups. And here just highlighting that this is what the European Commission is doing, often by offering the possibility to our forum to discuss with other EU institutions and, and different partners and to engage with our daily activities, whether it's dialogues with third countries or specific topics on which we're drawing new initiatives. And, and all these efforts will eventually lead to a better engagement also uh, between all of us at international level, including here in Vienna. So I think I will conclude by referring to what uh, Dr. Abel Bazoutou just said, that uh, we are all walking side by side and, and together we're, we would be able to improve health and security for our populations, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marie Odd. Um, I think this has been a really wonderful showcase um, from not only civil society, but from both the African Union Commission and the EU uh, Commission on a more long-standing way and a more a kind of new introduced way um, from different regions around the world of how um, different mechanisms can work alongside um, and support both way, in, in, in kind of both ways, the civil society can support the regional mechanisms and the regional mechanisms can support civil society in their work um, to ensure that we're um, coming together, co cooperating for effective drug policies and understanding the, the best way to do that. Um, civil society, as we've heard, um, often has very different and uh, 
on the ground kind of perspectives of what is happening. And I'm sure um, from what we've heard today, we've heard how um, useful that is to both the um, AU and the EU commissions. I will hand over um, briefly, I think, for a couple of minutes back to Dr. Abel um, Basutu um, to close out and then very happy to take any questions or comments from the floor from anybody this morning. Thank you very much. I will not take uh, much of your time, but just to mention that uh, civil society from our perspective is not about militancy. It is about a partnership for a purpose as echoed by the eminent speakers and panelists here, because our goal um, is the health, security and socioeconomic well-being of our compatriots. And as uh, one famous football team in, in the UK, um, as, as its motto, you will never walk alone. So with us, you will never walk alone. We invite you to dialogue with us for the betterment of our societies. Uh, over to you. Thank you.